Hi, everybody. This little informal video uh, shows you how to install Julia, how to install uh, Jupyter, iJulia, how to add Julia to the path. In this case, it's on a Mac, but uh, Windows or Linux uh, instructions are not uh, far different from that. And how to uh, access, in this case, a code repository uh, that I created for JuliaCon 2021. Um, but it should be quite general. So go to download Julia, uh, Google that, and you'll most likely end up on this page by julialand.org. Hit download Julia and you'll see the latest version of Julia. At the time uh, of this video, we're now in the, towards the end of July, so in 2021. So this is the latest version, 1.62. So that's the one you probably want to download. Don't download this one with long-term support 1.05, nor the upcoming release, the beta. Uh, just go to the current stable release. So choose your platform, Windows 64-bit or 32-bit, if that's your case, uh, or uh, Linux, or in my case, uh, OS X, Mac OS, I mean, and uh, download that. So this thing is downloading. It's not a very heavy download. Uh, after it downloads, we're going to install it. The installation on your machine, if it's not a Mac OS, if it's Windows or it's something else, will be slightly different. Um, but in general, this is not different than installing anything else. Um, it's a quite straightforward installation. So this will install now, the, uh, I'm in the process now of installing the Julia application. And in the case of Mac, this is one way of doing it. I drag it onto applications. And at this point, it's copying Julia to applications and it's gonna take just a, a few seconds and that should be done. So I can close the installer. And if I now go to the launcher, I see that Julia 1.6 is on here and I can launch Julia. See, so Mac for the first time is seeing that it likes this application and there might be some other security checks uh, where you, the operating system, uh, Mac in my case needs to allow uh, Julia to do things. Yes, in this case, Ju uh, Julia wants to do this and we say yes. Open, and that was the first time run. And then Julia runs in a terminal, um, which looks just like this. Okay, this is, uh, this is another, not really. Okay, so we can run, for example, Julia command one plus one enter, and Julia told us this is two. Great, we're in business. Now, at this point, we now want to install the uh, basic Julia package, uh, which is called uh, iJulia, and that's a package which allows Julia to connect with Jupyter. And let's see how that works. So there's different ways of installing packages. One way is in the terminal, sorry, in the REPL, in the read evaluate print loop, in this Julia read evaluate print loop is to hit the right uh, square uh, bracket, closing bracket. Yeah, so I hit this, key. this is what I hit, yeah. I hit that. If I do backspace, I go back into a mode where I enter Julia commands. But if I do this, then you see that my prompt changes and I am in the package manager. At this point, I can, I can see, uh, I can use package manager commands, the most basic of which is add, after which I put the package name. And the package name is iJulia. Make sure that you're with a capital I, capital J, and the other letters are lowercase. Once I do this, uh, the Julia package manager downloads iJulia. It uh, goes to the Julia repositories on the web. It downloads the latest stable version of iJulia and it's installing it on my machine. Okay, and this might, uh, might take a few minutes and that's, that's what's happening. Okay, so we can follow this progress. Uh, as long as we don't get any errors, uh, we will know that things are okay and for this package, it's also installing other packages. That's what we're seeing here, but that's not, not very important for us at this point. Okay. Now, iJulia will uh, run Jupyter notebooks, and the first time we'll run it, you'll see that in a minute or two, uh, it will also install Conda, which is a, uh, a general Python installation where Jupyter notebooks live. And that's it. 11 dependencies successfully pre-compiled, the installation's done. At this point, if I do, for example, status, that is the command of the package manager status, I see that I have one package installed, one main package, I choose, and that's its version. Good. Let's get out of the package manager, hit backspace, and I'm back in the Julia console, right? This is where I can run anything in Julia. And what we'll do is we'll do using iJulia. 
And that tells us that we want the uh, functions and other elements exported by the iJulia package to be available to us. The main function we'll use is notebook. And when you call functions in Julia, you uh, open and close uh, round brackets like that. So we're going to run the notebook um, back in the notebook function. Okay. But I won't do this just yet. I'm, I'm just going to quit Julia. So I'll do exit. So I'll call the exit function. Okay. That quits Julia. And we'll run Julia again and, and do that because you won't do the installation every time, but every time you'll, you'll, you'll run Julia, unless you set up something different uh, with Jupyter, every time you'll do that, then you'll, uh, you'll do using iJulia and don't talk. So let's see that. So exit should have quit, quit Julia. I'm gonna close this. Um, I'll, I'll close the terminal here as well. And I'll launch Julia again. Okay, Julia is launched using iJulia. Let's let it run. Okay, now here again, the first time ever running Notebook, if there isn't um, a Jupyter installation uh, that iJulia recognizes, it asks us, do you want to install Jupyter via Conda? And the default is yes, so we'll just hit enter. And yes, we want that to happen. At this point, quite a lot of things are going to happen. So the system is going to install Conda, which will allow Jupyter to run. So this might take actually a minute or two. As this is happening, uh, let's open here another terminal and work on something else in parallel. So what we would like is say we want to be able to run Julia, not like this, but rather from the terminal, we just want to be able to uh, hit Julia just like we can do ls or any other uh, commands in, in terminal, right? We'd like to run Julia and have it run, but that's not happening for us. So let's go uh, in the meanwhile and just uh, Google uh, adding Julia to panel on Mac. And you'll have that also for Windows, uh, if you're running uh, with Windows command line or with uh, Linux, etc. So here, are, it, it took us actually again to julialang.org download slash platform. So these are platform specific instructions for official binaries. So in my case, I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna go to Mac OS X and um, it says optional, add Julia to path. If you wanna launch Julia from the command line, first open new terminal window, that's what we've done and run the following snippet from your shell, examine user terminal app, note inside Julia Chrome. So, uh, rm minus f of uh, user local uh, bin julia just in case it's there in my case it's not there but let's let's run that anyway so i'm going to paste this command or i'll just key it in rm minus f user local bin julia and it's not even there, but that's okay. and then we're going to create a link now this link is going to create a soft link from applications Julia 1.6. But just let's just make sure that we've got this up to date. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do ls slash applications ju G J U and I'm going to hit a tab and we've got indeed a 1.6 app. Okay, so that's what we've got. All right. So just to make sure that it's not some future version because if we had 1.7 or some other version of that, then you'd need to link that. You do ln minus s applications Julia 1.6 app contents resources Julia Julia has a bin and in there there's a Julia and that's actually the Julia executable and we're going to link that to user us uh, r local Julia and enter no oh, and permission denied okay. So we don't have permission to have that, have that link. So what we probably want to do is is uh, is use a um, a sudo, and then I'll hit the password. So I've just done this as uh, I've become root or the super user. Okay. At this point, let's just see that this works. So I'll hit Julia and run it. And yes, we've got Julia running from the command. Okay, exit, let's leave Julia, exit like that, let's leave the terminal, thank you very much. All right, and during the time we did that, uh, guess what, uh, Jupyter was just, uh, Conda was installed, all this installation happened here on the left, 
And we're gonna have in a second our uh, Jupiter environment launch. Let's see, there it is, that's a Jupiter environment. However, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this tab, I'm gonna close this tab, I'm gonna close this tab, because we're done. And I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna hit Control C, Control C to stop this running the notebook. And I'm gonna leave Julia again and close. And I'm gonna run Julia again, okay? So I can run it like this, but just because uh, I prefer doing that, I'll, I'll open a new uh, terminal shell and I'll run Julia just like that. So again, using iJulia notebook. And this time there's not gonna be any uh, big installation, etc. Jupyter is gonna launch quite quickly and swiftly and that's Jupyter's launching and the web browser opens for us. There we go. Okay, now this is the main Jupyter uh, management console. And what, what we can do now is we create a new file. We're not gonna create a Python 3 file, we'll create a Julia 1.62 file. And that's the Jupyter file, okay? And that's the Jupyter environment. We can immediately change the name of that file. We can call it my first notebook. Okay, so that's the name of that file. And here we have cells. Once I put a cell, I'm gonna do one plus one. And if I hit enter, oh, nothing happens because I have room to write further Julia uh, code. But if I hit shift enter, then this is evaluated and the Julia kernel uh, evaluated that to be two. We're in business, okay? Of course, in Jupyter Notebooks, I can also uh, change cells to be of markdown. And then I can say, and say my, uh, uh, the V doesn't work on this computer. My favorite formula, uh, I can write uh, zero to um, infinity of, uh, e to the minus x dx equals one. Okay. Um, so that was a uh, LaTeX inside uh, Julia Markdown uh, sets. Okay. All right, we're in business. And uh, now let's go and actually run something substantial. Okay, so I'm going to uh, close this tab that has my first notebook. Uh, I will leave it. And we can see that the file is here. Now the file is not where we want it. This is in the root of our system, but that's fine. And you see that it's green, by the way, you can click on it because it's still running so we can get back into it. There's a kernel connect to it, connected to it, but we'll shut it down, okay? And let's even delete it. And these are of course things you can do also from command line or just from your file manager or whatever. Okay, let's now download the content for the JuliaCon workshop uh, for which uh, this video is primarily prepared. Okay, but this uh, video is general Julia installation in general. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to do GitHub, Yoni, Nazarathi, that's me. Um, and go to uh, GitHub here and there's a few repositories in GitHub and we'll do this one, JuliaCon 2021 statistics with Julia from the ground up, okay? Now, if you have GitHub configured on your machine uh, in one way or another, then you can clone the repo. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna download the zip file for it. Okay, we're gonna download the zip file. Here it is, and we'll keep it in downloads. Okay, so there we go. Open it. And we're in, we're in downloads and uh, it unzipped it and here it is. So what we can do now is we can go and navigate to this place through Jupyter. So let's go on Jupyter to downloads. Uh, terminal would like to access file and folder, yes. And we'll go to, uh, to this file. And here we've got uh, two folders. One is called the workshop, one is workshop with output. Uh, I'll open for a second workshop with output. So this is all the contents after we've run all the cells, okay? And it's significantly bigger in size than uh, the, uh, the other file, okay? We'll take it a second to uh, set up. And in parallel, I can also open the other one and that's just workshop. So I've got two, two tabs with two Jupyter notebooks. So 
So here's workshop with output. If I scroll down, this is going to be the whole content of the workshop. And you see that Jupyter Notebooks uh, inter include both uh, code and comments, and formulas, and outputs, and errors when we need to have errors or when errors are due, uh, et cetera, et cetera. OK, there we go. So that's uh, that. And this is the, the other Jupyter Notebook. Now, in this Jupyter Notebook, what you can do is you can actually take the existing cells, put uh, select a cell, and hit uh, shift enter on a cell. By the way, in Jupyter, you use the escape key to get out of the mode of writing in a cell. Okay, And it's running the code uh, for this cell. Okay, now this is this is taking a minute. It's starting up the kernel here, and it's happening for the first time. And what this did is it the working directory of the notebook is actually the folder where is this folder is a folder uh, that you downloaded, and it uh, shows you all the files in there. Okay. Now the next cell in this notebook actually uh, does things that you could have also done uh, from the package manager. Just like before when I showed you, if, if I run for a second a, a Julia uh, kernel, let me let me open, let me run a, a new um, Julia kernel. So run Julia and hit uh, right square arrow. This is a package manager, and here I can do all kinds of commands. Okay. So you can also do these commands programmatically uh, like that, as follows, using uh, elements from the PKG package, okay? And this is what this is doing. And this is actually, if you run now these few commands, um, what it's going to do is it's going to do a whole lot of installing for the first time on your machine. So these three cells, uh, which, will, which is equivalent to installing all of the packages that this workshop uses. Okay, so these are all of these packages. We'll speak about them during the workshop, or you could also head on to the workshop video if this is after the workshop. Okay. And all these packages are uh, viewable in the project.tomo in the manifest.tomo file, but that's not so important for us. The thing is that these cells now are running and this installation will take significant time. Okay. Now, one more thing you can do while this is happening, uh, if you if you haven't previously, is download uh, Visual Studio Code. This is not going to be used in this current workshop, but uh, Julia for Visual Studio Code is uh, is is a good IDE integrated development environment. So I'm now downloading Visual Studio Code. Okay, and this is another 173 megabytes in this case. Okay, and after you do that, I won't do this with you, but you can go to Julia for Visual Code and Julia for VS Code and follow the specific instructions here to incorporate Julia within your Visual Studio Code installation. Okay. Now you go back here and you see that uh, this guy is still running because the initial installation of quite a few of these packages that are using the workshop takes time. And that's it. That's the end of the video. Um, hope you enjoy. Bye.